On December 26 this year, the world lost a revered leader. A driving force behind South Africa's anti-apartheid movement and a Nobel Peace Prize winner. Desmond Tutu, Archbishop Tutu, was considered South Africa's conscience. The country began a week of mourning as grief-stricken citizens gathered to pay their last respects to the great leader, who was described as South Africa's moral compass. Flags would be flown at half mass nationwide until the funeral service. That they truly love you, and so to love you that they fully serve you. His service is. The whole mark of the life of the Archbishop was always his courage, his dignity and the compassion which he engendered to all he encountered. It is a privilege to have known him, and I think South Africa is the poorer with his passing. I really think that South Africa has really lost a legend. Um, we needed more time with the Archbishop, just due to the fact that we missed out a lot that, he's, that he taught us, but I do feel that we, do need, we needed more time. We, we really did, but unfortunately these things happen. May his soul rest in peace. And for what he's done for this country and for every other country, I think that it's made a, a massive difference. Um, politically, um, religiously, spiritually, it changed a lot in our country. Well, you know, he was a great man. And number one, what stood out is that he fought the apartheid government and he fought the present government. With the present government, he fought it as well. That's what stood out for me. At the St. George's Cathedral, better known as the People's Cathedral, mourners paid floral tributes to honor Desmond Tutu. The bells of the cathedral will toll for 10 minutes each, each day at noon until Friday in honor of the late Archbishop. Cape Town City Hall, a monument commemorating Desmond Tutu and the iconic table fountain were then illuminated in a color purple as a nod to the robes that Tutu often adorned. Other landmarks in the city were also illuminated in the same color. Condolence books and candles have also been put around Cape Town. We thought it would be a really lovely gesture uh, to send a message of, of uh, memoriam and also celebration of this remarkable man's life to light up the civic, uh, the city hall rather, the mountain, and St George's Cathedral, the Arch for the Arch, in his absolutely synonymous purple bishop's colour. Uh, and so that's what we are doing, and we hope in a small way that when this image of of these Cape Town icons go around the world, that it helps for everyone to remember this remarkable man and celebrate his life. Desmond Tutu died at age 90 at a nursing home. He was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 1997 and was repeatedly hospitalized for the treatment. His public appearances became increasingly scarce. In one of his last days, he made an appearance on a wheelchair to get the COVID-19 vaccine. He had largely faded away from public life in recent years, and over the last two decades, the outspoken leader had voiced his opinions on a range of topics, including Israel and its conflict with Palestine, the LGBTQ plus rights, as well as climate change. Desmond Tutu's funeral will be held on January 1st at the St. George's Cathedral in Cape Town. The Archbishop of Cape Town announced that due to COVID restrictions, only 100 people can now attend the funeral. Archbishop Magoba said that 400 to 500 people were on the list of possible attendees for this funeral.
at 10 a.m. on Saturday, New Year's Day. The funeral will take place here, and it is here where his ashes will also be interred. Please attend services in your local communities and parishes. Our list of possible attendees at the funeral run to 400 or 500 names and more than 100 clergy. But COVID regulations restrict attendance at funerals to a maximum of 100 and we must respect that. Only a fraction of those who want to be there can be accommodated in the cathedral. So please don't get into a bus to Cape Town. <laughs> we have arranged those cathedrals and the local parishes so that we uh, cater for your needs. Like falling in love. Now, this is how Archbishop Desmond Tutu described voting in South Africa's first democratic election in 1994. His remark captured both his mischievous humor and his profound emotions. After decades of fighting apartheid, Desmond Tutu was the anti-apartheid hero who never stopped fighting for the Rainbow Nation. Take a look on his legacy. Long hailed as South Africa's moral compass, Archbishop Desmond Tutu never shied away from speaking out. His tireless work against apartheid earned him a Nobel Peace Prize in 1984. But his fight against injustices didn't stop there. Corruption, AIDS, racism, poverty and even gay rights. Nothing was ever off limits. We must criticise that which is unfair, unjust, inequitable or immoral. Feared by some, respected by many, even Tutu's allies were fair targets, including longtime friend Nelson Mandela. Deeply disappointed by the ANC, in power since the end of apartheid, he remained above all an outspoken critic of the government. This government, our government, is worse than the apartheid government. But Tutu was not just an activist. Born in 1931 in a small gold mining town in the Transvaal, he went on to become the first black head of the Anglican Church in South Africa. He is also the father of four children and husband to Leonor Malinzo, whom he married in 1955. He was a family man. He was a father. He was a grandfather to not only his family, but to the many children that he touched um, around the world. At South Africa's first ever free elections in 1994, the Archbishop coined the famous term Rainbow Nation to describe the nation's diversity, a firm believer in the forgiveness and unity he worked his entire life to achieve. While Tutu was revered for his honesty and outspokenness, he will also be missed for his joyous spirit and his trademark infectious <laughs> laugh. <laughs> Leading the tributes paid to Desmond Tutu is South African President Cyril Ramaphosa, who called him one of the nation's finest patriots. Calling the day as a sad one, Ramaphosa said that a great tree has fallen. He described Desmond Tutu as a man of faith, who throughout his life gave expression to the biblical teaching that without actions, faith is dead. Take a look at this next report. In this season of cheer and goodwill, at a time when many people are celebrating with family and friends. We have lost one of the most illustrious, courageous and beloved amongst us. Archbishop Desmond Tutu was one of our nation's finest patriots. He was a man of unwavering courage, of principled conviction, and whose life was spent in the service of others. He in many ways embodied the essence of our humanity. Knowing he had been ill for some time now does very little to lessen the blow that has been dealt to South Africa this very sad day. 
Like many of his time, he was a witness to the gravest injustices and most intolerable cruelty that our country has ever witnessed. In his ministry, in his struggle against apartheid, and as chairperson of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, he saw the depths to which human beings could descend in the subjugation and oppression of others. And yet his faith in humanity and in people, like his faith in God, was unwavering. He knew in his soul that good would triumph over evil, that justice would prevail over iniquity, and that reconciliation would prevail over revenge and recrimination. Tributes for Desmond Tutu have been pouring in from across the world. Let's now take a look at how some of the biggest world leaders remember the South African leader. In a tweet, the U.S. President Joe Biden said that he was heartbroken to learn of the Archbishop's death. In a statement, Joe Biden and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden praised Desmond Tutu's courage and moral clarity. He said that he followed his spiritual calling to create a better, freer and more equal world. Former U.S. President Barack Obama, the nation's first black leader, called Desmond Tutu a mentor, a friend and a moral compass who could find humanity in his adversaries even. Obama added that Tutu was grounded in the struggle for liberation and justice in his own country, but also concerned with injustices across the world. And remembering her meetings with Desmond Tutu, the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, in a statement said that he was a man who tirelessly championed human rights in South Africa and across the world. The Vatican, meanwhile, in a statement said that Pope Francis was saddened and offered heartfelt condolences to the Archbishop's family. The Pope said that Desmond Tutu was mindful of the service to the Gospel through the promotion of racial equality. The United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres also paid a tribute to the late leader. He said that during the darkest days of apartheid, Tutu was shining as a beacon for social justice, freedom and non-violence. Feared by some, respected by many, even Tutu's allies. Meanwhile, the chair of the elders, Mary Robinson, said that the group was devastated on losing a dear friend. Desmond Tutu was one of the founding members of the group of global leaders that works for peace and human rights. Calling Tutu a true shepherd of peace, the African Union paid a tribute to one of South Africa's greatest leaders. The current chair of the African Union, Faki Mohammed, said and called Tutu a man of faith, convinced in the power of reconciliation through restorative justice. The Kenyan president, Uhuru Kenyatta, said that Tutu's passing was a big blow not only to South Africa but to the entire African continent. He added that Desmond Tutu inspired a generation of African leaders who embrace non-violent approaches in the liberation struggle. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Fondly remembering Desmond Tutu's good humor, the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson called him a critical leader in the fight against apartheid and in the struggle to create a new South Africa. He added that Tutu will be remembered for his spiritual leadership.
French President Emmanuel Macron also paid a tribute to the late leader and he said that Desmond Tutu dedicated his life to human rights and equality between people and that his struggle to end apartheid will always remain in our memory. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in a tweet said that Archbishop Tutu was a voice for the oppressed and a tireless advocate for human rights. He added that the world was a better place because Desmond Tutu was in it. Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela. They were the two pillars in the fight against apartheid and racial inequality in South Africa and across the world even. The two not just shared a commitment to building a better and more equal South Africa, but also shared an unshaken bond. It was Desmond Tutu who held Nelson Mandela's hand on the balcony of Cape Town City Hall on May of 1994 and presented him as South Africa's new president. Upon becoming president, Mandela appointed Tutu as the chairman of the country's Truth and Reconciliation Commission, a body which uncovered the abuses of apartheid after South Africa held its first democratic election in 1994. Desmond Tutu celebrated the country's achievement and its multiracial society, calling it a rainbow nation. According to the Nelson Mandela Foundation, the two leaders first met at a debating competition in the early 1950s and four decades later, in the year 1990, after spending 27 years in prison, Nelson Mandela spent his first night of freedom at Desmond Tutu's residence in Cape Town. During Mandela's imprisonment, Tutu was one of the most vocal campaigners of his release. Mandela was the one who first called Tutu the People's Archbishop. And on that occasion, in the year 1990, before everyone retired for the night, Desmond Tutu offered a prayer of thanksgiving and led a singing of a famous hymn called Let Your Will Be Done. From that night to Mandela's passing in 2013, the friendship between the two leaders only deepened. Being the outspoken leader that he was, Desmond Tutu became a fierce critic of the ANC. Even though Desmond Tutu was close to Nelson Mandela, he clashed with the then South African president, Jacob Zuma and the ANC party. In 2011, he even compared it to the apartheid regime and warned that one day people would in fact pray for the defeat of the ANC government. Tibet's spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, also paid tribute to Archbishop Tutu. The Dalai Lama said that Desmond Tutu was entirely dedicated to serving people for greater common good, offering his condolences to the family. The Dalai Lama also said that the friendship and spiritual bond between them was something that they both cherished. Videos that were earlier shared by the Dalai Lama's official website have been doing rounds on social media. And they give the world a perfect glimpse of the incredible bond of friendship that the two leaders shared. Take a look. Mischievous, aren't you? <laughs> uh, I consider that person also, you see, mischievous person. <laughs> Unfortunately, that person is Christian. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's a Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question of um, how you think about your own death. <laughs> that possibility. Quite polite. <laughs> Quite polite. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't mind too much because there's the reincarnation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering 
what is it about your friendship with each other that allows you to have this kind of extraordinary joy? He's always troubling me. <laughs> <laughs> I admire him enormously. Oh, oh, he's going to get proud. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just saying, he is there for us as a, as a beacon. So I really love, you see, he always teasing me, and also I tease him. Oh. Is so, so we really become something, something quite special. Yes. So, mm. and also his face <laughs> is, you see, the head looks like a monk now. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this picture, special picture, uh, I think at the time of my death, I will remember you. In the year 1975, Desmond Tutu and his family moved into a house in Soweto in Johannesburg. Villa Kazi Street in Soweto, where the house was located, is historic for many reasons. Long-time friends Mandela and Tutu lived for a long time on the same street, making this street the only one in the world to have been home to two Nobel Peace Prize winners. Residents in the neighborhood are now mourning the death of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, calling him an icon and a great man. Residents paid floral tributes outside Desmond Tutu's house in Soweto and shared their memories of him. Take a look. To literally do his morning run here, so to hear of his passing this morning, it's just a big blow. As you know that this street is the only street where in the, two, uh, in the world the two Nobel Peace Prize winners have lived. Um, you can then imagine us... Um, the neighbors around. Um, we are really touched by his passing. So, yeah, condolences to the rest of the family. His legacy will be his love for all people. Um, I don't know whether have you come across his writings. He has always said that God is not God of Christians. God is God of all people. So his main legacy is his love for all God's people. Um, and he believed that everyone is created in the image. And he used to add a word, beautiful image of God. Uh, and I've carried that myself personally in my own ministry. I would describe him as a humble man, as a, as a person who knows God, because he worked hard for God. And he was a very person who can connect with any people, any type of people. He was not choosy. He was not saying this one is poor, this one is rich. I won't accept the poor ones. He was a father. His wife also was a mother. Because, as I'm saying, I can talk about for 24 hours about Mam Tutu and Babu Tutu. The way that he influenced the Rainbow Nation and tried to make sure that all the races would accomplish so many things together. It, it, was, it was incredible, really. He was, uh, he was a very incredible person, really, and I really respect his ways. And with that, it's a wrap on this broadcast. Thanks for watching with me, Priyanka Sharma. And stay tuned to be on. Global News continues on the other side. We, we lift our hands. We raise our hands. We raise our hands and we say, we will be free. All of us, black and white together, for we are marching to freedom.